This is our fourth class on this Maimir. Vehenif. And as you know, the Maimir is about Kriyas Yamsuf. But it's not only about Kriyas Yamsuf, it's the juxtaposition of Kriyas Yamsuf against what's called in Pasuk, Bekiyas Hanohar. There is an event which is a miracle but it's much more than a miracle. The significance of this event is to bring together opposites, world and godliness, and to use the classic language, the chibur of alma de and alma de galya, the world where there is nothing but godliness, and the world where godliness is not evident, where godliness is not obvious, because you see the world and you don't see its life, the land and the sea, so to speak, and there are these two events of bridging these opposites. That the land and the sea should become water. The dry land should have a presence of godliness. Like like water covers the sea. Or vice versa, that in the sea you can walk on the dry land. It's bringing together two opposites. And the Rebbe taught us, the Alter Rebbe taught us, that the reason for these events is not only to save the Jewish people from a difficult situation, and to perform a miracle or for Hashem to display but as a preparation for the Nina Teira. The Ebishter gave us the Teira. And uh, of course the Teira teaches us the Teira teaches us how to be Jews practically. But in addition, the Teira is a chibur, the Teira is a tool for the fusion of godliness and, the, and worldliness. Teda brings a lakus into the world. Teda brings godliness into the world. So the Maimah teaches us that there are two events of Kriya and Bekiya. Kriya's Yamsuf happened when the Yidin left Egypt and Bekiya's Hanar is going to happen taken from Yad Mamish with the coming of Mashiach Tzidkenu. Kabbalistically, they're different. Kriya's Yamsuf is Malchus, Bekiya's Hanar is Bina. Because they both precede an event of Teda. When the Jewish people crossed the Yamsuf, they received the Teda then in Har Sinai. The Bishop gave us the Teda, and of course we know what says in Chsidis and Ayem Yem and so on. Matan Teda lo yir eid hapam. The Teda is not going to be given again. So you cannot say that when Mashiach comes, there's a new giving of the Teda, but there's a new revelation of the Teda, and the new revelation of Teda is called Teda Seishal Mashiach, the Teda of Mashiach. The Chazal say, It's substanceless compared to the Teda of Mashiach. So since the idea of Teda is much more than simply to tell us what to do and what not to do, but that the Teda is about revealing godliness in worldliness, bringing together the world in Elokos, that Hashem should be revealed in this world. So the events of Kriyas Yamsav and Bikiyas Hanar set up the event of Teda, the idea that when Hashem gives us the Teda or reveals to us more of the Teda, it allows us to bring godliness into worldliness is because before He gave us the Teda, He preceded it by fusing, by bridging the two opposites, godliness and worldliness, an event that happens before, Kriyas Yamsuf, before Matan Teda and Bikiyas Hanar, before the Gili of Teda, when Mashiach is going to come. But they're different, they're different. How are they different? Kriyas Yamsuf is a lower level, but Kriyas Hanar is a higher level. And therefore the Teda which comes after Kriyas Yamsuf is a lower Madrega of Teda. And the Bekiyas Hanar, which is going to come when Mashiach comes, is going to set up a higher level of revelation of Teda, the Teda of Mashiach. Technically, what's the difference? The difference is that the revelation of Teda at Matan Teda, which follows Kriyas Yamsov, connects Atzilus and the lower world, Atzilus and Briya. The Teda, the Gilea Lakus, which comes before and sets up the, the Haifa'a, the re-emergence, so to speak, of HaKadosh Baruch, when it reveals Sei Ta'ameo Mister Tzvei the secrets of Teda, which is going to be when Mashiach comes, this is a Chibor of higher than Atzilus and Atzilus. So the idea basically is that you need to, the Kvayachal, the Ebishter created his world, that we should reveal Hashem in the world. 
and that before the godliness could be connected to worldliness, Hashem has to unilaterally join the two. And this is Kriyas Yamsov and Bekiyas Hanod. And then he gives us the Tater, or he gives us more of the Tater for us to learn and to reveal the Abishtin in this world on these two levels. The Tater that we learn now reveals Atzilus in the lower worlds. And the Tater we're going to learn when Mashiach comes reveals Ain safe higher than Atzilus in the lower worlds, and they correspond to Kriyas Yamsov and Bekiyas Hanod. Now, what's happened in the last several classes is we've learned very little text. And the reason we've learned very little text is because the way this Maimed is structured um, forced us to speak out a lot of thoughts in a few lines in explaining these two events of Kriyat Yamsev and Bekiyat Sanohar and the two Mishalim of Dibar and Machshava and going past Dibar and going past Machshava. And then, of course, the Moshal of Yam and Nod itself, and the breaking of Yam and the breaking of Nod. We explained all of these things. And in the last class, we talked about what happened by Matan Teir. That Hashem broke the Yam, that there should be a Gili of Atzilas in the lower world. What's going to happen over the next several classes, we're going to be learning Bepashtus, more Kamus, more text, um, because the Rebbe is going to explain it better. There's going to be more words of the Maimir. Um, but the plan is to, to, so to speak, maintain a certain sense of order in how we learn it. If the first class was dedicated to the Moshal of Yam and Nohar, and the second class was dedicated to the Moshal of Dibar and Machshava, the third class was dedicated to Kriyas Yamsov and Matan Teira, today's class is dedicated to Bekiyas Hanohar and the Teira Chadosha, which is going to be when Mashiach comes, and in our Maimed is going to be called the Re'iyah, vision. So, we're going to start learning momentarily. But before we learn, I need to give you um, a little bit of background, a bit of an introduction. The information I'm going to share now, I have shared before in previous classes, in previous Maimodim, of all the years that we've learned. But it's appropriate that I share it uh, again. There is a Maimah Chazal that says, "Beteirose shall Rab Meir hayakos of kosnes oir bialef." In the Torah of Rab Meir, the word kosnes oir in Bereishis was written with an aleph rather than written with an ayin. Everybody knows that if a Sefer is missing one letter, or has an extra letter, there's a mistake in one letter, the Sefer Teireh is possible. Rameir had a Sefer with a letter that was changed, but it was a Kasher Sefer and he leaned out of it. I'm sorry. Because in the Madrega of Rameir, this was Kasher. In Bereishis, you have a description that Hashem made clothing for other Manchava. I don't remember the passage. Now, if you look in Rashi, you'll see, first of all, that this garment, this beged, that the Abish they made for Adam and Chava is before the Chet, after the, the Aveda of eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because the garment which they wore after the Chet, they made for themselves, right? It says in the Tate of that stayed that way. They, once they did an Aveda, they had to put clothing on themselves. And the clothing, of course, came from outside of themselves. From animal skins, from wool, from linen. In other words, chayt, semeach, Um But before the Aveda, the Ibishta made them uh, an outer kosne seed. And it actually brings a number of interpretations of what it was. And one of them is that it was like scales. Others say it was like the hair of a shofan. A shofan is a hyrex. But Kvayachot, the Eibishta made clothing for other Menchava. And the word that denotes it as Kosnei Seir. Kosnei means a shirt. Oyer means leather, animal skin. In Rameir Seifetere, it was written Kosnei Seir with an aleph, which means a garment of light, of Oyer. So it says in Chazal that Rameir wrote a Seifetere, in effect, and in a Seifetere he made this mistake in quotations. He put an aleph, Kosnei Seir, and he read from the Seifetere because for him it was kosher. So it says in a lot of Sfarim, I saw it in Shalom and other Sfarim, it's brought, of course, in Chassidus, 
what is the significance of this? What does it mean that in our Sefer Teir it says Kosna Hizir with an Ayin? And for us, that's how it has to be. If you read about an Aleph, it's puzzle. And in a Meir Sefer Teir it was written Kosna Hizir with an Aleph, and for him, this is uh, Kosha. And this is the topic that I would like to uh, explore uh, today. How do we understand Torah? How do we understand Torah? What Torah is? In other words, how do we understand ideas? Ideas that come from the Eibishter to the world. Ideas that are true. Ideas that are absolute. What's the process? What's the concept of Torah coming from heaven to earth? What's the process? What's the concept of ideas coming from another world into our world. So the answer is, this is a, it's a, it's a philosophical idea, the answer is that ideas come before the world. Seichel comes before Metzies. Ideas are ruchnias, they're spiritual. Spiritual is higher than material, and ideas come before the world. In other words, in contrast to Chochmas Chitenius, the secular approach, the worldly approach, that says that ideas come from the world, you study the matter of the world, and you develop an understanding of its patterns, you make predictions, you do tests, and you make determinations, and you get information from physical things. So the physical matter precedes the knowledge, the idea, the data that we know. In the Lushen from the Hayyem Yem, Chukim was veren gishafen fun leben, laws that emerge from the reality of the world. It's the other way around, that the ideas come first. And because of the ideas, they exist in the reality. Every, the, the physical order, the physical laws, the physical logic comes from metaphysical laws, the metaphysical logic which precedes it. And again, in the Lashon of the Yem Yem, was chukim was shafin leben, laws that are the source of life as opposed to the laws of logic, laws of nature, which are the source of life as opposed to laws of logic and laws of nature that are the symptom of life. In other words, ideas come before reality. But there's more. What's more? So I'll use fancy Hebrew. Fancy Hebrew. Don't get, don't get afraid of fancy Hebrew, but this is the fancy Hebrew. There's two levels. There's Oyer and there's Chayis. Oyer is ain't safe, and Chayis is Gvul and is Chalkos. Oyer is a light of the Abishta, which reflects the ain't safe. And life is divided up. How many different types of life are there? There's different organs in the body, there's the life of the brain, there's the life of the heart, there's the life of the lungs, the life of the liver, the life of the arms and the legs, and so on. I don't only mean biological life. I mean the life of what the brain does, which is process information, ideas. And the life of the heart, where it is, it's the seat of emotions. However, we understand the relationship between the heart, which is a very simple pump, and the idea of emotions. But now that's not to have that conversation. But the physical brain is a keli, is a vessel for the life of the neshama to rest. And the part of the neshama which rests in the brain is the life of ideas, life of information. The right side of the brain is chokhma, so there's a neshama for the chokhma which goes into the right, the mayach, the right side of the brain. The left side of the brain is pina, <coughs> pardon me. So the life, the neshama that goes into the left side of the brain is, is, is the source of understanding. And the back of the brain is Das. That's what it is on Pikabol. And of course, it's divided up into two parts. Das and Ete Klape Chesed, Das and Ete Klape Gvura. What that means is that when our brain functions intellectually to, to search for ideas and to be creative and intuitive in finding information and then being analytical and thorough and precise and critical in examining the information, there is a process that happens in the physical brain, but doesn't start in the physical brain. It starts in the neshama, in the spirit. And we say that the neshama has all knowledge. The brain 
The conscious person, which is the way the neshama functions through the physical brain, doesn't know. The neshama by itself, the higher levels of the neshama, knows all information. In other words, when we search for information, search for ideas, and find them, we're not finding them in the world, we're finding them inside of our neshama. The world may trigger it, the world may force us to ask a question, which makes us curious, which causes us to explore and creates framework for experimentation and so on. But the knowledge, the information, the ideas come from the neshama. And the neshama has all ideas. The conscious person doesn't. The subconscious and the essence of the neshama have all ideas. And there's a process of trickle down from a higher level to a lower level. From the higher levels of the neshama to the lower levels of the neshama. This is called chayis, right? Your neshama has chayis. And in the chayis of your neshama that's going to feed your mind... She already knows. The conscious person doesn't know because the person only knows through the physical brain. And the brain is a physical thing and the brain is limited and the brain is chosed and so on. But in the neshama information is known. But the idea that in the neshama there is all knowledge before it was chayis was air. That means before an idea exists in the physical brain, it exists in the spiritual soul. But before the idea existed in the spiritual soul, which is distinct, which is unique for ideas, it was part of the infinity of the neshama, which is called oyer, light. And the oyer of the neshama includes all levels. The chayis of the mayach, the chayis of the lev, the chayis of the kloyis and the kovid, and so on. So when you ask the questions, where do ideas come from? The answer is, they come from the eibishter. But the way ideas exist in the eibishter, they're part of oyer, part of ain't safe. And they descend from level to level, from Eir to Chayas to Koyach, from being a part of infinity to being distinct spiritual aspects to coming down into a physical body, into a physical brain, into the physical world, and so on. And al a human being acquiring information, is not him using his brain to, to create information, to find information from the world, the world may trigger it, but when a person had a question and then understood a concept and has an answer to a question, that came from the neshama. Because in the neshama all ideas exist, but first it exists on a level of chayis, and above that it exists on a level of, of oyer. In other words, before an idea was an idea, it was ain't safe. But when the idea was part of Ain Seif, it was a part of everything. And then when it descends from a level of Ain Seif to a level of idea, it diversifies. Ideas are one thing that come from the Ain Seif. Emotions are a second thing that come from the Ain Seif. V- seeing, vision is a third idea that comes from the Ain Seif. Hearing is a fourth idea that comes from the Ain Seif. Smelling, tasting, touching, all of the different faculties of the Nefesh that come down to the diverse aspects of the body before they were limited in the body. They were spiritual life. And before there was spiritual life, they were unified in the level of the neshama, which is called oyer. In other words, the madreg of yechida, chaya yechid, where all knowledge is not knowledge on a higher level, it's a part of the infinity of the neshama. And an, an idea that you and I understand came from the eir hanefesh, then it descended to the madreg of chaya hanefesh, then it was mislabish in the moyach, and that's how we know it. That's how we understand the information. The basic human limitation, of course, is that we don't speak the language of the neshama. We don't speak the language of the Eir neshama. We can't speak the language of the neshama on a level of Eid safe light. We certainly cannot speak the language of the neshama on a level... We can't even, pardon me, we can't even speak the level of the neshama, the, the, the language of the neshama, level of chayes. We can only speak the language of the neshama through the mayach. In other words, our ability to connect to our neshama and the knowledge, the data that a neshama has access to is through the physical brain and the islapsis of the nefesh in the physical brain which creates all kinds of tzimtzum and all kinds of limitation. We cannot know what the neshama knows directly without the islapsis in the brain and we certainly cannot know what the neshama knows on a level of oyer which is higher than the level of chayas which is higher than the way the neshama comes into the guf. How ideas exist on a level of oyer is completely beyond us. And the way a person works is he uses his mind to reach the knowledge which exists in the Shama and so on and so forth. 
Now, what were to happen, hypothetically, if a human being in the Shama Baguf could access an idea that exists in the Chayes HaNefesh without the Hislapshas in the brain. He would know the information that the Neshama knows without the medium of the physical brain. Or to ask the question on an even higher level. What were to happen if a human being in the Neshama Baguf would be able to access ideas, would be able to access information the way it's part of the Eid HaNeshama, the way it's part of the infinity of the Neshama, which is completely removed from the brain. What would happen to such a person? So without getting into all the complexities and all the things that can go wrong, in short, that would be called the Ruach HaKadosh, and that would be called Nevuah, because that's exactly what it is. Ruach HaKadosh and Nevuah is information, is data, is knowledge. And when you learn Chesidus, you learn Torah, you learn Rambam, you learn that the whole idea of Ruach HaKadosh and Nevuah is that the, the deepest things are Seichel, abstract Seichel, Chochma, like the Rambam discusses it, and Vistach, like the Lashden Tanya, the Gamma Fi Kabbali, the Fi Tiva Mils. Gili Elokus is an expression in Kabbalah. In the language of the Rambam, it's Ladas as Hashem. They're very similar. They're very, very similar. The difference between the two is minor. So if a person can access ideas as the Neshama knows them on a level of Chayas, and especially if a person can access ideas, where the Neshama knows them on the level of, oh, yeah, that's what the Ruach HaKedesh and the are. You have a Hayyem Yem with the Rebbe Rayatz is talking about Simchat Beis HaShayeva and Shemisham HaYashayev and Ruach HaKedesh and he brings a, a Yerushalmi with a Karban HaEda that explains what Ruach HaKedesh is and it's basically a higher level of Seichel. In other words, any time ideas reach you through your brain, that's intellect. And when ideas reach you and they're bypassing the brain in one way or another. So you're accessing information which is beyond what the physical brain is able to hold. It's also ideas, it's also information, it's also intellectual. But that's the beginning of Ruach HaKedish. And above that there's Nevuah and there's Madregis Madregis, like it says in all this forum. In Ruach HaKedish and Nevuah. So the idea that a human being can know what his Neshama knows without coming into his body First of all, it's, it's in the Ruch HaKedosh and Nevoah, which is, which is amongst the Gimelikri Amuna to believe that Akel Menabi has Bnei Adam, that this happens. And second of all, what he has or she has is ultimately ideas. But ideas that you cannot get from the brain, the brain cannot hold them. Ideas that you get directly from the Neshama. And then of course, there's the whole long discussion which we're not going to have about Hachana, about preparedness, like it's discussed in Rambam, that the Novi has to prepare himself to be Zeichat to Ruch HaKedosh and and so on and so forth. Okay, I'm going to get back to this conversation, okay? But I want to repeat what I just told you, but I want to use um, entirely different language. I'm going to repeat everything I just told you, but I'm using entirely different language. It says in Chesidus, and I'm going to assume that it's from Kabbalah, that a safer tater is made from white parchment. And the cloth, the white parchment of the safer tater is the madrig of sever kolalman. Or in the language of tonight's conversation, it's the madrig of air juxtaposed on the white continuum, the plain whiteness of the cloth of the Sefer Teda, are Asias, are letters. Now, of course, physically, those letters are written onto the parchment. You take a pen, and you use a special kind of pen, and special kind of ink, has to be and you write Jaila Sefer, you write the Sefer Teda, but film is Zuzus. But mystically, Api the Oisius, the black letters emerge from the white cloth. And each individual us, each individual letter would be al derach moshal memalei kolam. And the black Oisius, that of course, as you know, have to be muk of gavil, they're not allowed to touch because they touch to become puzzle. Each must be an entity unto itself, represent individual lights from a unified light. The white cloth represents a transcendent light, which we're going to call Oyer, and every individual us is going to represent a, a smaller light, a, a specific light, which we're going to call Chayes. Now, how do we learn? How does any human being learn? And of course, the answer is, you look at the Sefer Teda. You look at the Asius of Teda Shebek which is the basis of the whole Teda. Like immediately, later immediately by rice. So, could you read the right parchment? Take a piece of 
Sefer which is just parchment, and you do shirtut, yeah? You don't write any letters, just plain, you can't see anything. You have to read words, you have to read the letters, and you have to study them. And the rule is that first there is darkness and then there is light. Which means practically when you look at the letters of a Sefer Teda, you learn them, you translate them, and you ask questions. The questions are represented by the blackness of the aces of the Sefer Teda. They block. You don't see what it is. So you have questions. The questions on the words, questions on the order of the words, questions on the sentences. What does it mean? And you go from darkness to light. A question is a very, very important thing. The real definition of an intellectual is he knows how to ask a question. The, the, uh, the real distinction of a Talmud Mamulach, of a real student, is not that he can give answers, but he knows what's a question. What's a kasha? And of course, questions have to do with Helen Vahester. A question is a darkness, it's black. And of course, a question is a key that opens up a whole new world and brings to an answer. So what I'm trying to describe, this is already a third level. Yeah? The first level will be the white of the Sefer Teda. The second level will be the black atheists that emerge from the white, which represents a lower level of light. And the third level is the person. When you look at the atheists of the Sefer Teda, you don't see light, you see darkness. Philosophically, mystically, spiritually, the black atheists are blocking the white cloth which is behind them. And you don't understand. So you ask questions. And then you give answers. The answers that you give come from the questions. And this is the third level, al derech moshul, understanding ideas through the physical brain. So what are the letters of a Sefer Teda? The letters of a Sefer Teda, mystically, first of all, they're blocking the white, which represents a higher light. And second of all, you don't even experience the light of the individual us. You don't see the godliness of the individual letter, the individual word. You see the darkness. You see Akasha. And you ask a question, and then you give an answer, and you ask a question on that answer, and you give a second answer, and you use the Yerisya Satera to ask questions, to give answers, to find more of Chachma Satera. So not only can't we relate to the light of the whiteness of the Sefer Teda, we cannot relate to the, white, to the light of the black Oasis of the Sefer Teda. You relate to the darkness of the Oasis of the Teda, to the fact that those Oasis block, and they cause you to ask questions, which you're going to give answers to, and then you're going to understand. Now imagine a person who opens up a Sefer Teda and looks at the Oasis of a Sefer Teda, and instead of seeing Kasha, he sees Oir. Instead of seeing words, which he doesn't understand, which he then questions, and he gives answers for, he opens up the Sefer Teda, and the letters of the Sefer Teda gleam, they glisten, they shine. And they don't gleam and glisten and shine with a light of Chochmah, they gleam and glisten and shine with a light of Ain't Safe. They reveal the wisdom of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now this is, of course, the meaning of this Maimah Chazal, that in the regular Sefer Teda, it's written that the Eibishter made clothing for other men chave, out of oil, out of animal skin. Animal skin. So it's written, Kosnes Eir Ba'ayin. And the nimshal is that when we look at the Teda, we see darkness. We see a garment which is Ma'alam master, like animal skins are Lavusha Ma'alam master. Animal skins, leather is Lavusha Ma'alam master. And then you have to get from the darkness to the light. If you didn't have the darkness of the atheist, you would have nothing. But the darkness of the atheists in themselves give you nothing more than a kasha. Rab Meir, when he opened up a Sefer Teda and looked at the atheists at Teda, saw Lakus. He didn't see kasha, he didn't see Terutzim, he saw oil, he saw godliness or chayis, he saw seichel. But it was a seichel muad, it was a lichtik a seichel. It wasn't an idea that came from a question and then an answer. He saw it correctly initially, originally. And I once had the conversation with you at length, and I'm not going to repeat it now because this is taking far too long already. But that's one of the ways of explaining a maturgaman. You know, you can read the word Bereshis, Bodil, Lakim, Ezashmaim, Vesaretz. The translation is the same. But if you look at those words and you don't see just ideas, you see Eid Laki, you read the word three times, it said three different things. The maturgaman, the translator, repeats what you, th- what you said. But the translator only understands the seichel of what you said. And the oil of what you said is lost on the metogamon, which was makes him a metogamon. And if you read the same Pasuk five times, it can have five different meanings. Like I pointed out before, if you look in, in Tagam Yenizim and Azil, on Kaddish, 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 which we say every day in Davening, in the Valetzian, every Kaddish has a different translation. It's the same word in Hebrew, 
And yet when Yenuzim and Azil translates Kaddish, 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 each Kaddish has a different meaning. It's the same Hebrew word. He had to give three translations to the same Hebrew word. And the answer is because Yenuzim and Azil saw the Oyer of these words, the Alakus of these words, and from this Oyer comes a Seichel. And even though the word literally has one translation, if you see the Eid al you see theoretically an infinite number of different things. So the Meir Sefer Teda was written with an Aleph, Kosnes Eir Ba'Aleph, because when the Meir looked at the Sefer Teda, he didn't see Kashas, he saw Lichtekai. He saw Eir. So it says in Chesidus, I believe it's in Samach Vov, maybe the Maim has seen the name of but I haven't seen this Maim in years. That this was the difference between Rab Shimon and Rab Shimon's friends. They were all to made Rab Akiva. And they all understood Chach Masatera. And they all had Ruach HaKadosh. They all had, from the, what they understood of the Eibishtas Tera, Eid Laki, they experienced what is called Ruach HaKadosh, godliness. They, they understood it in a way that goes beyond what the human brain by its is able to access. It has to do with Talumis Chachma, with Helm of Chachma, with the ideas as they exist in the Neshama directly. But there was a difference. The difference was that Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon's friends, Rabbi Yehuda, and Rabbi Yesi, and Rabbi Meir, and Rabbi Lazar first saw darkness, and then they saw light. In other words, first they understood the concept intellectually, and the intellectual concept that they understood brought them to the spiritual godly light which is behind it. Rabbi Shimon was different. Rabbi Shimon saw the Eid key, saw the godly light in the, initially. In other words, what I'm trying to describe in this entire conversation is basically two concepts and the idea of Ruach HaKedosh. One idea in the concept of the Ruach HaKedosh is you open up a Sefer Teda and you see godliness written there. You see Eid key, and every word that you read is Eid key. But from that Eid key comes a Seichel key. From the godly idea comes an intellectual idea which you can teach and explain. And of course, every time you say the same words, you can say a different idea. But you don't go from darkness to light. You go from light to life. From an idea that exists on a very spiritual level to an idea that exists on a very down-to-earth level. And another person may also reach a Ruach HaKadosh, but he starts off with darkness. He comes from a kasha to a teret, from a choyshech to an ed, from not knowing to knowing. And this is the meaning that you have, for example, it's brought in, in the Rebbe Sichis from the Tolos Yank of Yosef, that the Baal Shem Tev used to call his Rebbe the Baal HaChai. Baal Shem Tev had a teacher. His name was Achi Ashileni. And there's a letter which is printed in Atomim and the Gis Kedish that describe how the Baal Shem Tev met him. And after learning for nine months, he revealed to him who he was. And the Baal Shem Tev was overwhelmed. He fell to the ground. And the Baal Shem Tev used to refer to Achi Ashiloini as Moiri Baal Achai. Moiri, my teacher, Baal Achai means the master of Chaya Yechida. The only way we know that Moiri Baal Achai is Achi Ashiloini, who was the person who anointed Yerav Benavot, and he divided up Malchus Yudah, Malchus Yudah, the Sikh from the Rebbe, Pinchas Tavshin Yud, where he explains why he is the one who taught Chesidus, because he was the one who divided the two Maluchas, and so on and so forth. He has to correct it by bringing Mashiach, and bringing Mashiach as the revealed Pimei Satera. But Achia Ashileni was the Rebbe of Eliyahu Navi, And he taught Chesidus to the Baal Shem Tev. So he calls the Baal Achai. What does it mean Baal Achai? Baal Achai means most people, even Tzadikim, are a Baal Abbas of the Madrig of Neshama. Neshama means Erez Bekelem, that you, your Neshama gives you access to spirituality and to godliness through the Kelim, through the vessel of the Guf. Balachai means you have access to alikus, godliness, without a vessel, just light directly. Just like Chai and Yechida and Madrigas and the Neshama that have no keli. So you have access to Ruach HaKadosh and to alikus, which is not connected to Asis, not connected to Kalim at all. Faket, by you it goes from light to life to form. So in other words, even in Ruach HaKadosh, even those individuals, those special, special people who have all the Achana and all the Tikkun, that they can be zeichet to experience Ruach uh, HaKadosh means information that comes from the Ebishta to them in their brain, which is not based on the intellect alone, but it's based on their purity, which opens them up to what is transcendent, what is beyond what their brain can take by itself. There are two pathways. There is from darkness to light, and they're seeing light initially. 
And people like Achia Ashiloini, like Rashbi, were in that rare category that they were in the Madrega of Rameyer that saw Eir. And the same is true when you say about the Arizal. The Arizal Achai, right? The Arizal Achai, the living Ari. Arizal Achai, it's an expression which is brought in many Sforim. But the title of Arizal Achai doesn't mean that he's alive, it means that also. But it means Chaya Yechida. He's a Neshama who related to the Eibish, this Chochma, directly from the Madrega of Eir. And certainly from the Madrega of Chayas. But it's before the Guf, it's before the Kali, it's before the Cheshach. So such Nishamas have first a Ruach HaKadosh, and then from the Ruach HaKadosh it comes to Seichel. Other Nishamas have from Seichel to Ruach HaKadosh. These Nishamas go from Ruach HaKadosh to Seichel. It's a whole different level. It's an entirely different level. And why am I telling you this whole thing? Huh? Why am I telling you this whole thing? Because I'm trying to explain to you what's transpiring here in the Maimed. The Maimed is saying that the Abish gave us a Teda. And the Maimed is further saying that when Mashiach comes, we're going to be getting a new revelation of the same Teda. What's the difference? The difference is that the Teda that the Abish gave us at Har Sina allows the revelation of Alakus, of Atzilus in the lower world. In other words, that godliness, Oyer, Chayas, ain't safe, should be revealed down here. How is it revealed down here? It's revealed down here through Teda, through Seich. And first you have the Seichel, and then you have the Eid al First you have the understanding, which has to do with Asius and Eid, Eidus and Kalim, and then you go backwards from understanding to experiencing the light and the life and so on. The Teda of Mashiach, which is called the secrets of Teda, Sei Ta'amel, Mistit Tzvenei Seha, reveals Chochm, reveals Ain't Safe. And this is a higher level, because not only is it revealing godliness, through the Torah, as we understand it, in the level of Seichel, it's revealing godliness directly. It's revealing the godliness which comes before Seichel, and from before Seichel, it comes into Seichel. And therefore, in order to receive the Torah, now was enough Kriyas Yamsuf, which means you break the barrier between Atzilus and Bria, that the godliness of Atzilus should be revealed in Bria, but it goes from Keli to Eir. But in order to reveal the Torah Hadosha, they say, Tamel missed it, Sveni Seha, which is going to be revealed through Mashiach, you have to have Bekiyas Hanor and the revelation of Chochmah. And what's the revelation of Chochmah? It's the revelation of the godliness, which is the source of the life, which is the source of the ideas of Torah as they descend from a higher level to a lower level, but you know them first on the level of Eir. And therefore, the preparation for such a Gilu is a higher level. Breaking of a barrier, not breaking the barrier between Atilas and Bria, but breaking the barrier between Atilas and Ain Safe. Because Atilas is Eiris and Caleb, higher than Atilas is not Eiris and Caleb, and the Alakus which goes from Atilas and Bria is the Eir, which are the Shaykhs, the Kaili going into the lower Kaili, and the Asad Love, it's going to be an Eir which is higher than a Kaili coming into the world. So, what I just did basically was explain to you. Um, but I understand, of course. That's all I can do is explain to you what I understand. What I don't understand, I can't explain to you. Um, the difference between the Gili of Tere, which was in Elam Haza, and the Gili of Tere, which is going to be the Yasad Lavi, and the fact that it's connected to two different breaching of a barrier, Bekriyas Yamsov, such as the Tere of now, and Bekriyas Anos, such as the Tere of the Yasad Lavi. So we're ready to learn. So we're ready to learn the text of the Maimer, the Pneum of the Maimer, which is essentially going to say what I just described. That there's a barrier that separates a higher level from a lower level. The lower level is Atzilus. What's Atzilus? Godliness revealed in a vessel or through a vessel. And the breaking of that barrier is revealing a godliness which is completely beyond the vessel, above the vessel. And in our Maimer it's going to be called the Re'il, like as if you can see. So let's read. Let's read. We're going to start on line uh, 65. Vihine. And the Tater we have now is a Tater whose primary focus is on action. In fulfilling the mitzvahs actually. And of course, equal to all the mitzvahs is limit a Tater. But Tater on a level of Seichel, which brings to a level of Chayas and Eir. When Mashiach comes, there's a reward. And of course, there's a lot of aspects to the statement, Other places will tell you 
that Lamocha Lakabos Chanim is not Yemei Samashiach, it's Elam Haba. Because Yemei Samashiach is still part of a Yem Lasesim, like it says in the Rambam. At the whole point of Mashiach, Kilei Nesava Chom Vat Tzadikim Vachasidim Vachacham, whatever it is, Yemei Samashiach, for this, that, and the other, but they should be able to be Eze Betele Vachachmasa, Kedei Sheyisku Lachai Elam Haba. So L'asad Lavi has many taichin, but over here L'asad Lavi means Yemei Samashiach. Says the Rebbe, who inyan is galus pnimius hatayra v'taimei mitzvus. It's the inner tayra and the tam, the pleasure, the delight in mitzvus. To the Pirush Rashi, it says in Shir Hashirim and Rashi, the beginning of Shir Hashirim on the pasuk, Yishakenim Rishikas Pio, a kiss on the lips is much deeper than the communication of ideas. It's a, it's a stapkas rucha berucha, joining together of two spirits. It's a much higher level. In other words, the tayra of Mashiach is going to reveal more godliness in the world. But it's going to reveal more godliness through a different method, a more direct method, not through understanding, but through seeing. Which is the very concept of Mashiach. It's written by Mashiach. The Mashiach said, Kenu is higher than all the who came before. You have five expressions Yaskil, Yorum, Nisa, Gova, and Miyat. Five words. Hine Yaskil, Avdi, Yorum, Nisa, Gova, Miyat. So it's brought that these five words, Yaskil, Avdi, Yorim, Nisvagov, means that Mashiach is going to be higher than Mesha Rabbein. Number one. Mashiach is going to be higher than Avram, Yitzhak, and Yankiv. That's numbers two, three, and four. And the word Me'ej is a film of Adam edition, who's the Madrega of Chaya, Ak. But Mashiach is even higher than Adam. So Yaskil, Nisa, Yaskil, Yisa, Yorim, Gova, and Me'ej, or that Mashiach is higher than these five great tzaddikim, even the Mish other Marish, who is Adam Kadma. Hainam Yavraham, the Yitzhak, the Chulu, Ad, the Gova, Me'ed, ACS Adam. Mashiach is even higher than Adam. She Yelamayla Bechinus, Adam Marish, is higher than Adam Marish, who is the Madrig of Adam Kadma. And Bechinus Mesh Rabbeinu, who is the Madrig of Chachmeilah. Because Mashiach reveals Yechida, but it's also Teir, it's also a Giloi, which means it also comes into a Keli. But it's a much higher revelation and it comes in a much more direct way. And now the Rebbe explains it with a kasha. Any move. I want to understand. Mashiach is going to come. And Mashiach is going to be in the highest madregis, right? And Mistama, you know that the Rebbe has a sikha. In Sefer Asikha's Tov Shin Nunal Chilik Beis, Shvuas, the famous sikha of Terech Adosh Miti Tetzi, where the Rebbe says that there's a remez in a Rambam for Terasa Shom Mashiach. With the Rambam and Hechaz Tshuva Perik Tes, Halacha Beis, talked about the idea that Mashiach is going to be Chochom Godel Yeser Mishleim HaMelech, and Novi Kor of the Madregas Meisha Rabbeinu Olav HaShom. The Rebbe has a very involved Tzichah since when is Nevua connected to Teda, Ein Novi Rashi L'Chadosh Dov HaMiyat, a whole long explanation how Taka Mashiach is going to teach Teda Chochma, but the basis of what he teaches is going to be his Ruach HaKedosh. So the Rebbe says, any move, and the question is, Eich, Yuchal, Ha'echad, how can one person, namely Mashiach, said, Kenu, lost says, Ribu, Yeribu, Vesan, Hashem, to carry myriads and myriads of people, and teach them all to The aid, moreover, Vali Oz, Betchias, Hamesim, Yekumu, Meshe Rabbeinu, Allah, Vashalom, Meshe Rabbeinu, Vesach, Meshe, Vadne, Mon, the Rebbe brings, Aganav, Tchias, Hamesim, and Gam, Kola, Gedelim, including all the great giants of yesteryear, Shekvar, Yedim, as Kola, Tehra, Kulo, who ran the whole Tehra, Vachulu, Mashiach is teaching Tehra to people who've already mastered it all. So what's the Tehra? It's Elo, Inyan, line 77, the answer is, Ki Oz, Yi, Alim, Ud, Bepnimi, Asa, Tehra, Mashiach is going to teach the Neshama of the Tehra, and the Neshama there is not a different Tehra. But he's not going to teach us the Tate on the level of Hamaisa Shayasun Ve'ela Shalasi Asen and telling us what you have to do and what not to do. In Tanya, he gets like, you have two ways that the Altareb explains how we're going to know what we have to do. Halachas of Tate. One explanation is we're going to learn it once and we're never going to forget it. And the other explanation is, like Avraham Avinu, we're going to know from the Nista the Nigla, from the Ruach HaKedish to say, but what's going to be the idea of Eisekol Ha'elam Kulei? What's going to be the Teda that preoccupies in the words of the Rambam, Ladas HaSavayi Bilvad? You're going to learn Teda not to know how to do his mitzvahs. You're going to learn Teda to know what he is. And of course, the mitzvahs are him also. And doing the mitzvahs, and the Kavanos HaMitzvahs is Yedi Hashem. But we're not going to be busy with understanding the Teda for the sake of Amaisa HaShayasa. Ve'ela HaShalei Sena to know what to do. We're going to learn the Teda to access... The Yediyas Hashem, what's called Yichsidus, ain't safe. 
Baruch HaKedesh, a much higher idea, that of course, Aruch HaMeyeres Midah, this is where the infinity of Teda lies, V'yesh Ba'li Yisrabas, in case V'tachas, you can have a sense in Teda without an end. And the Rebbe says this a lot of time in the Sikhas, and I believe that it says, now the Rebbe Shachon Aruch HaZosam Teda, that it is possible for a person to learn Kala Teda Kula. Because it's fine, it's huge, it's huge, but it's finite. But that's only Nigla. Panimiyas HaTeda is infinite, because whatever you know, you can always know more. And Mashiach is not going to teach us the Teda and try and understand the Nigla, or the Ruach HaKedish, which is behind the Nigla. He's going to reveal the Panimiyas HaTeda, the godliness which is behind it. So the Rebbe now mentions the Bekiyas Hanor, and we talked about this last week and two weeks ago, Bariches. So today we're going to be Makatsir, we're going to be more brief. Achine, Kimei Shekedeliyas Kabbalah Sateda Bayem Lasesim. Just like we discussed in last week's class, that in order to have the Teda of today, Hoyatzarachliyas Tchila, Kriyas Yamsuf, the sea has to split. And what's the Yam? It's the barrier between Atzilus, which is a world of godliness, of revelation of godliness. And Bria, which is a world of worldliness, where godliness is concealed. And the Yam holds Atzilus inside so that the lower world should be in a state of hell. And Kriyas Yamsov means that what's happening in the higher world should be revealed in the lower world. That in Bria, in Asiya, we should understand the Tate and also have the Ruach HaKedr. Says the Rebbe Kach in a similar fashion. Kedelias is Galus Pnimias HaTeda LeYosed Lovi. When Mashiach comes and there's a revelation of the Neshama of Teda Tzadach Liyais, Vehein if Yodei Ala Nohar, just like the Yam has to be split, that Atzilus should come into Bria and reveal the Lukus of Teda in the world, the Nohar, the river, has to be split so that Ain't Seif should come into Atzilus. Ain't Seif, Atzma Ain't Seif. Ain't Seif, which is higher than Atzilus, should come into Atzilus and lower and reveal Pnimi Yitzat Teda, which you're going to see on the next page is called the Re'iya, on a level of visualization, on a level where you're able to see it. Vuhu, so he explains, Nohar Pros, Nahar Pros, the river Euphrates, physically it's the Pros. The Ksiv Bey that is written about Nahar Pros, but Nahar Vihu Pros, you have in Chumash that there's a place called Eden, which is Chachma, which is Ain't Safe. And then there's Nohar Yeitse Me Eden Lahashke Sesagon. Eden is an ephemeral place, it's a theoretical place, it's a spiritual place. And a river flows from Eden to Gan Eden. And of course, Adam and Chava were not in Eden. Adam and Chava were in Gan Eden. And then it says, And the river which flows from Eden into Gan Eden then flows out of Gan Eden. And when it flows out of Gan Eden, it divides it up into four tributaries, into four rivers. Whatever they're called, Chidekel and Pros and so on. And when it comes to Pras, the, which is physically the Euphrates, it says the word, That the extra word, who teaches us the Meikar. It is a river that comes from Aden to Gan Aden, which is divided into four, and then goes from Gan Aden to world. One of those four is Pras. But Pras is called Huperas, which means to say that it carries the waters of Aden which it brought into Gan Eden, now it carries it into the world. That not only does Pras bring Gan Eden to the world, it brings Eden itself to the world. which is the of Bina. Of course, what the al Rebbe is trying to say is that all the rivers bring godliness from Gan Eden to worldliness, but they bring it through an intermediate step from Ensof to Atzilus, from Atzilus to Bria, from Eden to Gan Eden, from Gan Eden to Elamis. But Nahar Haravi, who put us, brings the Eden itself into the world. Says the Rebbe, she begins machshava, that being at the level of thought, shalom which is above speech. Like we discussed, a river flows incessantly, and the thought of a person works constantly, but the thought of a person, even though it works constantly, is limited, because it thinks in a deliberate way. Valkein nikir nahar, thought is compared to a river, and speech is compared to the sea. Shaham machshava ein nahar, thought never stops. therefore thought is called a river. It flows constantly, like it says in the pasuk. which means they will flow to him, to Mashiach. the sea, which is Malchus, is a collection of water which sits still. The cover of a carpet stands in one place, which is a madrig of deep. But sometimes you could not speak also. 
So what's the pshat? Bekiyas hanahar. The bekiyas hanahar means that the nahar which is bina, which carries the enig, the Aden, from Aden to Gan Aden, from Gan Aden to worlds has to be broken. Broken so that what Aden itself is should come into world without stip- being changed in the river which is coming to Gan Aden and from Gan Aden. This is the shot the river flows from Aden. There's always an idea of the godliness of the Madrig of Aden coming into worldliness. But it has to pass through Nohar. And Nohar is a Lavush. But even though thought, and again, I'm saying this very quickly based on the fact that last week we explored it, two weeks ago, yeah? That was, we explored it at length. And I told you then, I, I think I read like, the second class of the Maimah, we read like a one or two lines. Because I told you then that the, the way I'm teaching you the Maimah is I'm trying to set up the ideas, and then we're going to learn the Maimah in order as the Maimah is written. So even though when a person thinks, they think incessantly, they can't stop thinking, but thinking is a deliberate process. In other words, thinking is an exercise in slowing the brain down enough to be able to talk to yourself, almost, in a level of thought. The neshama itself can race, can go much, much faster than you can think. But for most people, if they would think faster than they can think, they would get confused. You must slow your neshama down so the thought would be constructive. Those people who are very sensitive and very pure and very in tune can think faster than other people they can think with such speed with such haste as if they're passing by they're completely skipping the madrega of Mahshav. and that would be breaking the barrier of of nohar of bina and accessing the air directly chokhma ain't safe vehem gam kinak bechinas levushim etzam chokhma thought is only a garment for the ideas of chokhma but just like speech is, the thought is obviously deeper than speech. The thought is still a limitation because the person can only think at the pace that he can think constructively. And it slows down what the nefesh is. Compared to the essence of as we described earlier, that means two weeks ago about the symptom of speech, that when a person speaks, they have to concern themselves not only with substance, but also with form. So in Machshava, the same idea in a higher level. The concealment of Asias HaMachshava is higher than the concealment of Asias HaDibur, but it's also a Helem Behest. And then you have Tabakiyas HaNar, break that Helem Behest. So that in the lower world, you have a Gili of Etzim HaChochma, which is um, for main safe, higher than Atzilus. I'm on line 94. It says in the in another place. There's a deeper level and a shallower level. A deeper level means you relate to an idea with such sensitivity, you don't even see yourself thinking about it. You just get to the point. And the shallower level is you think it through in a way where you see how you are deliberately and patiently thinking it through. With the notion of Hashem raising His hand over the river and splitting it. That there should be a revelation of the level of Aden, as it is by itself, which is Tainugalaki or Aidalaki, as I'm explaining it. Not how it is now, that it's stopping Gan Aden, has to go from Aden to Gan Aden, from Gan Aden to worlds, like going from Insef to Atzilus, and from Atzilus to the lower worlds. Shwa the ACS through letters, the ACS Malbishim Malimim, they block and they hide. It doesn't give you access to Aden as it is by itself. There's going to be a Bekiyas Hanor, the breaking of the process, the river, which is the Madrega of thought, or the Madrega of the Nahor, and we'll be able to relate to Lakus directly, not from Seichel to Lakus, but to Lakus directly. You're not accessing the godliness directly. Yeah, pause. Pause. Says the Rebbe, Valachin, Omer Azal, Seif Perechi, the Brachas, the Gemara says the Brachas. This is a very famous Gemara because it's been made famous in Samach Vov and in other places in Chsidis and so on. Shall Eide Nemar Ayin Leirasa. Gan Eden, the Shammas live in Gan Eden. But Eden, Ayin, Leirosa, Lekim, Zulasechem, no one's ever seen Eden. 
Because Eden, we say Eden Lechod, and Gan Eden Lechod, Eden is the essence of godliness. And the way I explained it to you in the introduction, it's like relating to ideas. Not by first understanding them and then appreciating their transcendent light, but seeing the light initially. It's not connected to Kali. V'shem HaTeme says the Gemara, Hu Gan Eden, Hu Gan, Hu Eden. You would think that it's the same thing, so the Pasuk says, Talmud Leimar, V'nar Yetzem Eden, L'Hashke says that Gan, the Eden is higher than Gan Eden, V'ainu, Line 101, Mishum She'ena, Mishacha Ba'gan Eden. The idea that something is brought into Gan Eden is Rak Bem Tzoy, Se'esi, as the Bechin Esnar, Kanaus, revealed through the river that carries the Eden from Eden to Gan Eden, but because it's being carried by a river, it's also being limited, it's being contained by a river, like letters of thought limit what the Neshama could know otherwise. Sha'esi is Heimalimim, the letters hide, Va'agil, Rak Ba'amod, reaches us as only a trace of what the Ein Seif is by itself. Says the Rebbe, what's going to happen when Mashiach comes? Avol, Ayyadei Vehein, if you're the Lord of a game, and Hashem himself raises his hand. And I told you last week, it's not through Meshach Rabbeinu, it's to himself. It's not through a stick, it's his hand alone. Yovei Lagila Bechina Seidin Mamish. Mashiach is going to come. And Hashem is going to split the river. So there can be a Gili of Amadez Kassin, Amadez Galia on a much higher level. Connecting Ain Seif with Atzilus and Bia. And it's going to set up the Lima Dateri, which is going to be when Mashiach comes which is Mashiach teaching everybody Tehra. And of course, you, the Rebbe asked the question, how could one man teach everybody? So in the Hayyem Yem, you have the famous word that Mashiach is going to be an unbelievable honor. That on the one hand, he's going to teach Tehra to Mashiach Rebbeinu on the others, on the other hand, he's going to teach Tehra to all of us. So you have a mini melech, the same idea. How could one man teach everybody? And the answer is, he's going to teach by the ear, by visual, which is a whole different thing. This is the Pshat of Mashiach comes, we're going to see wonders. That the godliness of Mashiach, or the godliness of the Tate of Mashiach, is not something we understand, but something we see, an actual vision. Which is above understanding and hearing. Because when you understand them, when you hear it, you have to have words that carry the idea and limit the idea. When you see, you see the essence. Hearing is much less than seeing. The idea that Mashiach comes, Hashem is going to reveal a Torah, which allows us to see godliness. And as I explained to you at great length in my introduction, you're not going to first understand and then see the godliness. You're going to initially know the godliness. And forget from the godliness, you're going to come to understanding. Says the Rebbe, the concept of this vision the Mashiach is going to have, which is going to allow him to teach everybody because he's teaching not with words, not with ideas, but with visualization by showing. But not visualization means imagining. Visualization seeing godliness is in the Madrig of Chachma itself. The famous story with Arizal, Shigabi Arizal, said by Arizal, that Arizal had a brother in law. Who walked into the Arizal on Shabbos afternoon in Pasha's Bullock. And the Arizal was sleeping. And his lips were moving. I think his eyes were open. And he lay for two hours. And when the Arizal woke up, his shrug had asked him, Can you repeat to me what you were seeing, what you were understanding while you were asleep? So the Arizal's answer to him was, For me to tell you what I saw in those two hours will take either 60 hours or 80 hours. And there's explanations in Kabbalah what's the number 60, what's the number 80, but it's completely disproportionate. Two hours of ideas can be repeated over the course of 60 or 80 years. Shabishas Hashina Biyema Shabbos. That one Shabbos he went to sleep. Shama be Yeshiva Shal Maila Bapashas Balak Ubilam. He heard where they were learning it in the Yeshiva in Ganeid, in Pashas Balak. Dvarim the Floyim, such wondrous things, Mashallah Yachal the Farsham, that he could not explain them. Bishmain Nim Shonim Ritzuvas, in 80 years of successive talking. And here the Lushan is first of all 80 and not 60, and second of all, Shal Yachal the Farsham, even 80 years would that be enough. Says the Rebbe, but that Tamul I don't understand. Okay, Arizal's brain works faster than yours, but how much faster? Twice as fast, five times as fast. So much more quickly that two hours equals 80 years of successive talking. How can a rizal grasp in his thought? In an hour, takes 80 hours to say. The take, he was thinking it and he wasn't saying it, and thinking is higher than speech. In the letters of thought are considered great letters that are higher madrege because thought is very few words that encompass much as opposed to speech, which is many 
very many words which encompasses very little. Says Lebe Mikomokim, even if you're going to say that he was thinking and not speaking, how much faster can thought be than speech? Hainu Shamasek Bimachshava. But ever show you can reach in an, an hour, a quarter hour of thought, it takes two hours or an hour to speak. But not 80 years. That a person should think for one hour. I'll take 60 or 80 years to repeat. It's impossible. So the Rebbe says, what's the answer? He didn't understand it. His brain didn't work faster. He saw and like I explained to you in my introduction, he didn't first have a cash and then have a terrace. First have an idea and then have a vision. He saw the vision first and it came from the vision to the idea. And in that madrega, there's no limit because it's not only not limited by the limitation of speaking words, it's not even limited by the limitation of deliberately thinking thoughts. And you know the answer is, his understanding was through vision and Mashiach is going to teach the whole world Teda by showing us when you see, you can see Chochmah that is by itself. Not as Chochmah descends into understanding, which is of course limited and more complex. And here we're talking about seeing, which is it's much higher than understanding. The way it's understood through being invested in understanding. In other words, we have a physical brain which allows us to understand. And everything we understand has to pass through our brain. We have, we have the ability to speak words or to listen to words of speech and in thought and we only know what reaches us of the ideas through the thinking and the speaking which are a great limitation. Here we're talking about seeing the course directly. It becomes possible that what you can see in an hour or two if you would desire to put it into spoken words, you would need for this 60 or 80 years. So this explains the Bekiyas Hanor where Mashiach is going to come. And again, it's about the Teda, that Hashem is going to reveal Teda in the world. But He's not going to reveal the air, the Gili of Teda, but the air, the Etzem of Teda, Teda which is higher than Ishtashos, which is called Chachma. And we're going to know it with that which is going to explain how Mashiach teaches everybody. And we're going to go, in that time, we'll all go from Eir to Chayas to Seich. We're going to, we're going to first see the godliness, and then it's going to come down to the worldly level of being able to understand it. And we'll continue Mitzvah Hashem next time.